Welcome to the Nook on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve. I'm here today with Matt, Mike, Hoy, Christy, the dude, <laughs> and John. And uh, I think we'll start first with Mike's beer corner today. So what do you got for us, Mike? It's like beer. It is beer, I guess. It's really it's good. Like beer. It's like beer. It says I, ginger it's beer. Good. It says ginger beer. Yeah. All right, so it's Krabby's um, alcoholic ginger beer. Ginger beer, that'll get you drunk. <laughs> so how could you go wrong? And it tastes delicious, really by good. the way. Yeah. So, yeah. Almost like a cider. Yeah, it was, really, it was that sweet. Mm-hmm. Definitely going to pick this up again at one point or another. So tonight we're talking about chemtrails. Do they exist? Spooky music. (laughs) (laughs) Cue the spooky music. And if they exist, why? Um, Did a little bit of research this weekend. Watched where they... What in the world are they spraying? And why in the world are they spraying? Oh, you watched both of them. I did. I watched both of them. And then I... Uh, I I was very I, I was pretty disappointed, especially how you guys talked about it, because watching it, most of the show was oh we have all this evidence for and for chemtrails and they don't actually show the evidence. There was there was a couple of things like some some water tests and things like that, which I then looked up and found out that those aren't out of normal ranges at all. Hmm. But the, even the soil on, on Mount Shasta. Yeah. Um, the high levels of the aluminum. average average. First of all, aluminum, which is the one of the chemicals they said was high. Aluminum is the third most abundant uh, material in the Earth's crust. Most uh, metal. Uh, th- it's the highest concentration of metal uh, uh, in the Earth's crust. The, uh, on average, the soil is 7% already, and they, they measured it at 6.8. But so. that has to be extracted, right? From bauxite. Right. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Aluminum yeah. is a manufactured it's not, product. Uh, yeah, right. But so the, aluminum isn't... Yeah, not in its pure form. Right. It's not. Yeah. But they, what they were testing for was the chemical form. It wasn't, it wasn't for the pure... pure um, Aluminum form, and then uh, one one of the things was elevated levels of of barium or is it barium? Barium. Barium. Strontium. Um, I didn't look too much into the strontium. I probably should have, but barium. The the barium levels, first of all, in the samples that they provided on the on the show that. Where are they, where, what in the world are they spraying? Were normal levels, but uh, a, according to uh, like government levels, they, they they're within government uh, mandated levels, and uh, but I think uh, if there were elevated levels, you have coal burning plants and gas burning uh, elect- electrical plants that also put out barium which, which would could account for for any elevated levels and so, then so it really would depend you, you, you really have to research the research the area and see what's what else what kind of factories or what, what kind of energy supply and just what kind of industry is out there if, if any yeah, if you're to if if you wanted to prove that this was coming from some chemtrails, I think you'd have to you'd have to account for all that. And I haven't seen anything that does yet. Anyone that has. Well, I know that um, someone in the Air Force I knew, was a, a fighter pilot, mentioned that they use uh, they call it chafe. Uh huh. Chaff. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You've heard of this to. So that that there's it's aluminum, right? Isn't it to to mess up the the radars? There's mm. so when they so uh, someone using radar to try to see if there's incoming planes, it, it scrambles the the radar. I re- I remember reading something about chaff. Mm-hmm. I don't recall what it was made up of. Right. 
a, another thing that I've read in a similar um, a similar topic to that is they use uh, the spraying of aerosols for enhancing communications uh, in the ionosphere. Oh. Um, right. They call it and, and they call it solar radiation management, which is using them to protect the basically critical systems and communications in case of solar storms. Um, now, how, ac how often are they actually doing this? And are you going to look at the sky and say every, everything coming from a plane is a chemtrail? Is that, that could be poisonous? I, I don't think that that is necessarily true. You know, I mean, well, I, I think they, they have definitely, people have definitely used um, sp spraying aerosols for weather modification. But to actually know right. when silver iodide, I yeah, think. Silver yeah, silver iodide so is one that's of them. An, another thing too. Is what is like you get to this? It's the same thing with global warming, right? You've got so much money going into it is anthropogenic, it is not anthropogenic, and then uh, you've got I'm sure like a, a, a brigade of government workers just putting out disinfo just to cloud the water anymore. So you're at the point where like it's there's so much shit out there, it's hard to even tell what's true, true. Right? So, and I, I was simply saying like, uh, maybe even the barium, strontium, aluminum thing is even a, not the not the truth the the truth of it, right? Okay. Uh, and I'm not uh, having I don't have an alternative theory there other than like, why I generally come on the side that something is going on is because you can go on online and you can see. Uh, a corporation advertising its fleet of 27 beach whatever 18 whatever you know high al all of them and it, they'll tell you straight up it's for high altitude spraying operations right so like there's corporations that are actually advertising contracted really? for high altitude spraying I've operations. seen pictures you but I didn't in. know I don't know if it's there real was, if it's just made up there was even yeah I mean weather modification just, you can uh, people hire the services to do weather modification normally farmers mm -hmm. uh, the money isn't a big deal, the, the problem with that, because you've got, uh, especially in the United States, I'm sure it's the same in the UK and all over the world, in fact, Catherine Austin Fitz has spoken to it, the black budgets, the number is so high, it's enough to, to completely fund a whole other state, you know, and that's all just missing money out of existing states. It's like $80 trillion out of the U.S. Government, out of the US budget, and that's above the $17 trillion in debt and above the what is it, 75 trillion in liabilities like Social Security and whatnot. So you, now you've got another 80 trillion that's just in the shit that the government can't say that they spend it on. So, so the money, funding a project like that isn't an issue to me. I'd like to step back and, and just to, 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 I want to hear this correctly. So you saw, uh, or you did research and saw a website, a company yeah. that they have a, a fleet of airplanes. Right, yeah. And they advertised that they do high altitude spraying, up, spraying yeah. operations. Yeah. And there were several web hmm. different companies that do this? Or uh, do you do you I, it's been several months since I did it, mm -hmm. and I know I saw two. And I don't think I went any further than that. I don't think I, I didn't really feel like I needed any at right. that point in time. But. Well, I also, uh, years ago, a friend of mine in Oregon showed me, we were talking about weather modification, and harp and woodpecker in Russia. And, so uh, he mentioned that, that, that there was this website, it was in Texas, and it was, it was a, like a state website, and you went and it said .gov at the end, mm -hmm. and, and it was Texas something .gov, and it, it had a list of when they were doing weather modification mm -hmm. and when to be mm -hmm. wary of flash floods. Yeah. And I mean, the property wow. damage, when, it was when, .gov. I mean, when, yeah. when, when, no. when they seed clouds, they put out notifications in newspapers oftentimes to let people know. But this, this was, a, it said weather modification. Yeah. I mean, they were talking oh, yeah. about we are enhancing. Well, China's weather. boasting that they're clearing so, the skies for the Olympics. They had a drought problem. They, cr they created a blizzard that ended up making like a $7 billion uh, there was, uh, crisis. There know? was one incident. I, can't, I think it was at least a couple decades ago, if I remember correctly. But they had uh, sprayed... I think it was silver iodide over an island. I can't remember which where it was exactly. I'd have to look up the story, but it caused flash floods and killed hundreds of people. Um, I think it was the Philippines, but I could be wrong. I think it was somewhere in Asia. All right. So also, um, 
if weather if the weather modification doesn't exist, uh, then why in 1975 did Congress pass an act to prevent weather modification? It was the Weather Modification Act? Because well, the weather right? modification and, exists. And, and the reason, geoengineering, right? The, yeah. the geoengineering. And what happened was is uh, they st started the technology from this documentary I saw. And it even showed the, the act of Congress. And, and let's say the reason why they passed that uh, for, for the government to stop using weather modification was because they were changing uh, migration patterns for birds in, in, in Africa somewhere. And the point, the whole reason why that was happening is they were using uh, weather modification, high altitude spraying to seed storm fronts to try to flood out the Ho Chi Minh Trail during the Vietnam War. <laughs> and to go further back from that, it was uh, during World War II when they first started to kind of use it. Um, they also seeded a, a weather front and they flooded a town out in, Ger in Germany before the soldiers went in and it turned a place into a river, supposedly. So if that's the case, why are we in a drought? That's, the, that's, a, that's, that, that's a good point. Yeah, like weather modification. To, to me, well, I look well, at there, there's maybe. the argument there and, and is that California would be the U.S.'s Greece, right? So if, if, California agri down. if California agriculture fails, it pretty much takes the whole U.S. Yeah. with it, you know. So there's that aspect of it, if, if you want to go that dark with it. Now, let's be clear. We don't have any actual knowledge of these, of these programs, but uh, I want to get back to this. Uh, I, I think it's pretty obvious that geoengineering is a thing, like it... It does happen. They do seed clouds, for instance. And they admit it. <coughs> they don't only admit it. Like I said earlier, they post things in the paper yeah. saying, hey, we're going to be seeding clouds on this day or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that stuff definitely going on. What I'm saying is the streaks across the sky, I haven't seen any evidence to say that that is spraying. Understood. I mean... And this is just my... Those are just my, contrails. My, I grew up Condensation near Air trails. Force Base as a kid, so there was a lot of air traffic. And I was at building all the airplane models. You know, I loved air career. I could tell you all about World War II, all the way to current jet aircraft when I was a kid, like a lot of kids. I was always looking up, and I didn't see the horizon-to-horizon -horizon trails that you see now. I live out in the country, and I'm always looking up, and there'll be days where the sky is riddled with them and then you can see another jet of generally the same altitude and there's a trail behind it but it evaporates you know relatively two inches two fingers right behind it and then it's in the company of horizon to horizon trails on the same day same time you know so what's well, the there's difference? a reason for, yeah it's altitude. It was, well, altitude altitude and, and it has to be a certain altitude for uh, well, altitude it doesn't have to be a certain altitude, but it has to be a certain temperature and humidity. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you just get those in, temperatures at higher altitudes. How much water is coming out the back of the, no. the, mo of the turbine? You know, or in the flying so tire, some, some, yeah. some, some jet engines and release more, more vapor than others. So I get all that, but... Uh, yeah, but why are I, these clouds... Um, like, I've noticed some of, some of these trails, you can... In Florida, they do it a lot. And um, I, I've driven across the country a lot, so I've kind of followed these these tr these patterns across the country, and I've I've watched them. Some of them kind of just fall to some whatever it is. There's some kind of something mm -hmm. dissipating, falling to the atmosphere, but that I haven't seen in a really long time. But I do notice is these these patches they just expand and they become cloud cover yeah i've watched it become cloud cover that's, that's true too. so so well, contrails but, can do that but they don't always mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it and for it's years, really a, it goes back years yeah too. it's i've also seen a roll cloud which they didn't tell us that in roll in, cloud yeah high school biology class or whatever uh, they don't tell you about a lot of biology but yeah <laughs> but it, you see now, like, now you when i went to school they like, told us about three different kinds of clouds yeah. Yeah. Four, cumulus, nimbus, cumulus, and cumulus and nimbus the, whatever the cirrus, well, nimbus, nimbus just means yeah. training but oh. cirrus cumulus and stratus clouds yeah. those are the three that i was told about and then you have alto versions yeah. and nimbo nimbus versions yeah. but yeah. So those are the, those are the types of clouds I was told about in school, and there's so much more than that. The other possibility is what's uh, what's being used in the fuel, what the additives in the fuel are, um, 
And I've actually seen patents for dispersion of uh, aerosols uh, for weather modification purposes through fuel. Have you, ever so just, have you ever come across a nanoplasm in any of your research? Uh, I, I've seen a, I, I've heard about uh, nanoparticles being dispersed for different reasons, and I've also heard of um, there was one smart dust years back. They talked about using well, smart heard about dust, smart dust, spraying smart dust into the atmosphere, um, and it dispersing, and then using that to track the movements of um, a lot of things, and using it as basically a, a sensor uh, to sense what's going on in the environment. Um, but do they actually have that technology for those? Nano as, sensors? as far as I know, smart dust has been created, but I, right, as, I don't yes. know so if it's been used. We could have little nano things like running around here. It, it, you don't have breathe it into your lungs. They're watching us right now. <laughs> so, oh, sorry, man. Yeah, so oh, that's I, kind I, of I think scary. it's when it, when it, I, I think most people, because people would be upset about this, they would. It's not something they'd really try to. How would we detect it? Yeah, I, I don't know exactly how you detect something like smart dust or anything like that, but. I, I guess the thing I, I, I would, when we're talking about, if we're, are we talking about geoengineering? Are we talking about, um, is every contrail always a chemtrail? Like, what is, if you're talking specifically, are things being sprayed into the atmosphere for different reasons? I would go with yes. Um, for, uh, like I said, weather modification. Um, I've heard solar radiation management. Uh, but is, is there anything like... Uh, you know what's interesting about that uh, that one uh, global warming management that that kind of thing. There's a concern amongst environmentalists, and it's a valid concern that contrails, but particularly the ones that spread out and create create uh, sky cover, actually exacerbate the problem of global warming because it's trapping heat. Mm -hmm. in the air. So we've got to be close enough to where the technology is accessible to the average person that we could just say, fuck off FAA, launch, launch a rocket or a little fucking, our own little uh, drone. When I get that job, right up, doctor, man. Yeah. When you launch it up <laughs> 35, 40,000 feet. Catch, catch an air sample, bring well, it back down, ask, have we, we, and, we you know what I mean, that? like, no? and test what's in the yeah, backbone yeah. right now. We've got to be close enough to be able to make that happen. Well, I mean, there, there are a ton of people who use um, weather balloons, cameras. weather balloons, yeah, and cameras yeah. with GPS attached to the the payload. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And I don't know exactly. And I know a lot of people do. I don't even know if you need a permit for something like that. Not that I care. But. This doesn't help. This doesn't help like the actual debate. But there are like government documents you can cite too, just to reinforce the idea that absolutely geoengineering is real, and uh, there's no question about that that that's going on. But you got the uh, uh, National Science Foundation document 1966 on global on uh, manipulating the weather and its uh, and its implications, and then you've got a like a 2000 seven document I think it is it's uh, Air Force publication on owning the weather by 2025 yeah mm. that's the other thing is uh, the the ability for a government or any organization to that is in control the of the weather uh, to manipulate events using weather I mean right. if you if you cause a flood somewhere uh, you you can pretty much halt you yeah. know the p movement of people you, you can you know damage the economy and make people poor. It, it, let's say somebody's, you want to harm a community because they're, you know, right. against... Sign you know, this document, sign this treaty, or you're just going <laughs> to fucking die. You know, you're not going to have any crops going on. But if, if they have a, a, a publication making a claim of owning the weather by 2025, then they got to run experiments. And while they're running experiments that they're not telling about us, then it would be natural that they'd have a bunch of disinfo in there to cover their tracks, you know what I mean, out there. So and that's why I get back to the anthropogenic global warming argument. It's just like there's so much shit. I mean, I, you know, I, we've done it before, but uh, the IPCC, I mean, that's just a, you know, under anything under the United Nations is tainted. You know what I mean? It's, a, it's an organization with, a, with an intent to control, and from that avenue alone or from that perspective alone that just about everything they produce is going to be shit you know <laughs> when i uh, when i think about this um, 
this sort of stuff. I, I've come to the conclusion kind of um, in, in you know similar fashion to me being kind of simplistic about it. I work at an undisclosed location up north, and <laughs> if I can't make that even more shady, I, I'll think north of a way to do it. North from an undisclosed from, location. North from an undisclosed location, <laughs> so if you think of a certain, like, long, uh, longitude we're on, just, you know... Coeur d'Alene. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... Out here in Arizona. <laughs> but, you know, I, so... You know, we're you know Matt, you kind of mentioned it was like you know it was like everything flying over a, a, a chemtrail. So you know where I'm at, like it's middle of nowhere pretty much. So you know, big sky country, and and it looks to me to be about the same altitude. But of course, from the ground and being a person with the unaided eye, it's almost impossible to tell. But you know, I'll, I'll see a jet fly over, and it'll you know the the whatever is coming off of the back of it will sometimes be there for you know maybe 20 minutes pushing it and to me in my head that's what i know to be a contrail from right, you right. know from back when we were little kids staring up at the sky and you know finding little shapes in the clouds and whatnot these are the last hours right it, yeah. you know but but they, you know but now it seems like you know about the same sort of altitude or at least it appears to me to be it'll fly over and then you know what is coming off the back and, and steve you, you mentioned it you know the sense that okay so it spreads out. That might have to do with humidity, whatever change, a current going through, Winds. like right after. But I just I, I see it so much to where the point where I go, well, why is it that you know it'll be like that some days really bad, and then well you also have the exact opposite. Well, the well where there will be clouds over. I mean, and and this is Southern well, California. Days it's warm and sometimes yeah, it's yeah, cold no, I have, yeah, well, it's, I, it's I, Groundhog I, Day, I, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, you know, know weather wise. I you know? understand <laughs> that that you know like clouds you know although the sun will burn off the clouds but i mean it'll be like some thick shit and by like the end of an hour it's just fucking gone and then and then at the same time i'm hearing jets fly overhead like pretty heavily and then i just look at them oh it's fucking gone and then you'll see like the remains of like little trails up there and I, I, so again like it's you know i don't want to i don't want to be like you know like chicken little like oh fuck the sky's coming down fuck everything but it's like i'm just seeing it and it looks odd to me and that's kind of that's where i come into this whole thing that all right they have the ability to do it we know, we know that they, we know they have the ability to do it and i think they have the motivation to do that so what is that when it comes to like the elements of a crime that's two out of the three right so like so you know, uh, and well, part of one of the elements of the crime too, though, is to know it is Maybe. evidence that a crime has actually been occurred. Right, has actually right. occurred. So was that three out of four? Then have they ever proved you know? a murder without a body? I think they have. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So yeah. it. They've also exonerated how many yeah. off of death, right. death row? Yeah. 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 With DNA evidence. Right. No, I got you, man. I yeah. Do. So you know, they 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 can do it. And the, it, would, it would help them out to do it. And if they can make it rain, yeah, they can make it rain. You know, they could make it not rain. So I, I can see their motivation right, yeah. for doing it. And I just, that's why I don't think of it as impossible. And then you've got other weird things where if you ever post anything on the internet about chemtrails, like within five minutes, somebody's posted back, oh, chemtrails, that's bullshit. Five minutes? Really? At 3 a.m.? That was quick. <laughs> like, seriously, you can do that. Like, go ahead and just play, like, go on YouTube or, 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 you know, sometimes Facebook or whatever, and, like, if somebody yeah. posts something about clouds, and like, any time of day, somebody says something about chemtrails, within 20 minutes max, somebody will post up, chemtrails are bullshit. At 4 o'clock in the morning, is this really what these people are dedicated to doing? Like, because we know they're paid trolls, so you don't, you know, there's, there's, they have the ability to also just, you know, have people go out there and be like, oh, say shit about chemtrails not being real, or, or like, you know, uh, with the conjecture earlier was, well, maybe all that, sh all the stuff about aluminum barium is just completely a distraction. Right. You know, yeah. that maybe it's, it's. Maybe it's not about manipulating weather, but about. Something. Crops or humans and doing something to humans. I don't know. It, well, it, yeah, if you could it's simply. Not, it's it, not outrageous. Or, I mean, we see, like. Unless you're trying to hit the entire population, though, uh, I don't see how spreading stuff at 40,000 feet is. Uh, it's not directable at, at that level, you know what maybe I mean? Right. Maybe it's. I don't know. And again, but, I, I, yeah, we're I, just. We're just. Having a conversation, yeah. right? Maybe that's just. Maybe it's not intended for zip code 19 or. 
You know. Zip zip code two zero zero eight six seven five three zero nine. Yeah, you get my point. Right. Yeah. So I guess when it comes down to it, it's when we're when people are mixing the attack on humanity argument with. Geo, geoengineering, which there is plenty of evidence for, is happening. Um, so, I, are the two should they be separated? Is it is it are those two being you know put together in the same discussion because they want to downplay the uh, geo modification or geoengineering or what is it? Why is this such a controversial topic on the internet? Is because people guess, are I seeing think, stuff in the sky that they never saw before. Yeah, I think well. First of all, from what I've read, it first came into prominence in the mid to late 90s from the Art Bell Show. And when people see these streaks across the sky and think, hey, I don't remember seeing that before. Um, Which is these are naturally questions that people are going to start asking. And I don't think that there's answers out there for... Well, but there were. It's the temperature. It's the altitude. They're flying right, higher. That's, There's more traffic. You know, that could be that, really... That could, could account be, for a lot of it, it if not all of it. Yeah. Is that, yeah, we... There's a lot more planes in the sky now than there ever was before. I was reading that there's 100,000 flights a day worldwide. Uh -huh. uh, I, I couldn't find information on earlier, uh, uh, earlier than a few years. Yeah. Grabbing so, that would be really so nice to find I, out. I generally come at it from... But it's been a steady rise, for, <laughs> or a relatively steady rise. This isn't scientific, but here's like, there's a general motive to make humans question themselves, to make them believe they need to be <coughs> regulated. So you could do a whole stream of things. It would be in the controller's interest to do a whole bunch of things, of course, through uh, media... <coughs> songs, movies, all that stuff, but also actively manipulating something as long as the narrative at the end of the day says, yep, humans are fucking it up and humans need to be regulated and make the humans beg to be regulated and, uh, yeah. you know, that's conspiracy true, right? yeah, theory that's about true, the conspiracy yeah. theory. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's, you know, I mean, I, you know, talk about, you know, uh, uh, the you know the shell within the shell or something you know the little ru Russian dolls if you will to so use that as an analogy too right, you yeah. know I mean I, I've I've thought about this before with like when it comes to like uh, you know what like every now and then if you end up in the dark heart of the internet you know they'll you know, some people you'll end up watching some video about reptilians right. I think that's total really? bullshit. Mm. <laughs> you know, like... Wait, I, tell me more about this yeah, reptilian yeah. thing. What? Where's that? Yeah, but no, I mean, I think that's, that's total bullshit. And to the point where I think, like, some of these videos are straight up made by somebody who's bored in the af on a Friday afternoon and he <laughs> works for the CIA and he's like, you know what, I'm going to make a video about reptilians and see how they watch these people freak the fuck out. Well, that's something you know else what I, mean? I, like, I found you know, while, while researching the subject is there's a lot of videos that out there about chemtrails that have been at least uh, uh, that have been faked like straight up faked yeah and it's completely obvious that it's been faked right uh -huh. and so I think there's and a is lot. that are those trolls I think or? that's also you I mean you go to Sandy Hook and you go to any one of those incidences too and there's some that are just obviously you know like like who the hell even watches this and maybe that's to get like uh even they jack up the the hits, you know. Oh, let's Happy give this date. one, you know, yeah. two million hits. You know what I mean? Right? You know. So this one, the first, uh, the the guy who's like, Sandy Hook's a fake. You know, they're like, what the fuck is this? And the first one they get is this one that's like, obviously, you know, like the worst, the most shoddy bit of, you know, uh, the the, the, the dubbed women, over, like women right? all covering their faces. It's the same woman from yeah, all these right, different yeah, places. Right, right. right. No, they're and just then they're bad like, pictures. I knew this was bullshit. You know what <laughs> I mean? And then there's no more investigation on the subject. It's dead. Dubbed over robot voice for some reason. Somebody <laughs> didn't want to like put their, you know what I mean? Like those those ones are always kind of suspicious to me. Like, come on, really? Like you're that worried that you had to. Uh, but so, all right. So whether or not they do exist. Here's a hypothetical. So you've got, you know, let, let's call it a military jet flying over. And, uh, you know, so you're on the crew of this, of this jet, whatever. And they have, they, have, they have, you know, an android of some sort, robot, flying the aircraft. 
Uh, do you think, like, you know, because so much of the stuff is autopilot now, you got your Airbus where it flies itself. Do you think, like, if you were to go up and talk to the robot and, you know, say, like, hey, you want to go join the Mile High Club, would this robot be okay with it knowing that they're not, they don't really have that much responsibility to, you know? Or maybe it, it could remotely control it. Yeah. So be like flying a plane and having sex. That's got to be I two mean, separate clubs, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's two tickets. Listen, two ro- tickets. Robot sex. Oh, hold on, guys. Yes. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Robot right. sex. Right. Time. Time we did it. <laughs> <laughs> we will get to it one of these days. <laughs> one day. One day. <laughs> Have a good nice. one. Nice. Thanks. Good night. Oh, Jackalope, 29th to August 3rd. Yes. Arizona. Be there. We'll be there. We will be there. Have a good one. Take it easy, guys.